and welcome to the PC America reseller training series. My name is Adam Mora and I am the sales engineer that will be conducting today's training. Today we're going to be discussing the functionality of the invoice screen. Let's get started. When you first click on the software this brings you into your login screen. On the login screen you have three buttons at the top of the screen manager, help, and exit. Manager allows you to make any back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of our software, you can refer to the help menu. Exit allows you to exit out of the software. On the left here, we have a number pad. This number pad is what we use to log into the software. In the software, we have default to password, which is 01, and the password is admin. So let's log in now, and this will bring us directly into our invoice screen. So now we're going to type in 01. Enter, and our password, admin, A-D-M-I-N. Now this is your invoice screen. This is the screen where the end user is going to be logged in for 90% of the time. This is going to be your money maker. At the top of the screen here, we have scan barcode now. When you scan a barcode, the item will populate the screen. Let's scan an item now to show you how that looks. So when I scan the product, it shows you the item number that I have associated with that product. It also shows you the price and description that I have set for that product. Because we only rung up one of that item, it shows the quantity as one, and the price that we have it set at, 190. If you look to the top right here, we have a subtotal and tax, which calculates our grand total. Grand total is 203.30. At the bottom of the screen here, we have four options, delete, discount, quantity change, and price change. These items are used to manipulate the item that is currently being rung up. Now these are line item adjustments, meaning you must highlight the line that you are adjusting when using these buttons. In the middle here, we have up and down arrows so you can navigate through your items that you have rung up if they occupy more than the screen. So let's bring up a couple, a couple items to show you how these buttons work. So as I said, you must highlight the line in order to use these functions at the bottom here. So if we hit delete, we have to make sure we have the item highlighted, as we do. Number four is lit up. And now hit delete. The item now disappears. Discount, okay, this is a percentage. Keep in mind, you do have the ability to create coupons in the system for the dollar amount or percentage. So you're not locked down to the discount percentage. Again, if you want to apply a discount, highlight the line, which number three is selected. Let's say you want to apply a 50% discount. Now this isn't to the whole invoice, but to that particular line. So hit OK, and it shows you that it has now been discounted 50%. Now change a quantity or quantity change. Now this can be used uh, to change a quantity. So as you can see on screen, we have two of the same products rung up. So let's say instead of having two separate lines, I want to delete one, so I'll highlight two, and then just change the quantity to uh, two. Which will, still, which will still bring up the order as two Johnny Walkers. So let's hit delete. And now we can change the quantity to two. And there you go. Our price is back now at 406.60. Making that 190 times two, which is 380. We could also do, also do a price change, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be whatever the price change is times the quantity. So let's say we want to do a price change of $100. This is going to be 100 times 2, which will make our price $200 here. So hit OK. As you can see, the price has now changed to 200 But with our subtotal and tax, the grand total is 214 even. Below these options here, these item options, we also have uh, buttons for customers that are more comfortable using a keyboard and mouse. These, uh, these options at the bottom of the screen also work with the top menus here. We have File, Tools, Invoice. So when you hit Tools, you'll notice that the cash, cash split tender is F6, and at the bottom of the screen is the same option. Okay, so these are uh, options for customers or end users that are more comfortable using a keyboard and mouse. Above that, we have quick find and find. If you are tracking your customers in the system, uh, maybe for a loyalty program or just to track them, track their sales, okay, uh, this is where you would come to pull up and look for those customers. Quick Find allows you to swipe a card if you have an access card or any kind of card associated with that customer. Again, uh, 
Access Card or Swipe Cards is a product that we offer, so if you're interested in purchasing these cards, you can contact your account manager. At this point, you could also just swipe the card and it will pull up the customer's information. Find. Find allows you to, to sort through your customers either by last name, company, phone number, or by individually, uh, either just by the number, just by last name, company, phone number, or again, all four. So let's select the customer and show you what that looks like. So once I select the customer, it shows my information that I have set here with that customer. And uh, it shows you that I also have a bonus plan or a uh, uh, customer loyalty plan set with this customer as well. Above that, we have cash, check, credit and debit, and account. These are just basic shortcuts to your Mount Tender screen. Let me show what I mean by that. So if I click on pay, this will bring us directly into our amount tender screen. As you can see, we have cash, check, credit, debit, and account. When we hit pay, we have, the sim we have similar options as well. Cash, credit card, gift card, on account, and debit. And these are just tenders that we offer in the software. We also have the ability to do mobile payments, which can show up here as well if you have that set. And we could also do EBT. The software is fully capable of doing EBT as well. The item must be marked as a food stemble item, and that is how it will show up for that product. At the bottom of the screen here, we have quick tender buttons. The last button always rounds up to the nearest dollar. If you hit cash, this is going to close the transaction out for the exact amount. Let's say the customer gave you two fifteen. You would just type that in and then hit cash. It will then show you your change due. Above these quick tender options, we also have Void Invoice, Fetch on Hold, TS Lookup, and Options. Voiding invoices are, is a feature that cannot be reversed, so when you're voiding something out of the system, make sure it is your final decision. This is also tracked and recorded in your invoice totals report. Option number three, Fetch on Hold, pretty neat feature. Let's say you get to a line of customers and you have a busy line of customers and uh, you, have, you get to one particular customer and maybe they forgot their wallet. So what you can do with that transaction is take it and put it on hold while the customer retrieves their wallet and continue with your line of customers. So to show you how this works, I'm going to ring up a couple products. And now, you know, this particular customer forgot their wallet. Like, oh, I forgot my wallet. What can I do? I got to run to my car. Okay, sir, that's not a problem. You can now take the transaction, hit the hold button, give it a reason for why you're putting it on hold. All right, let's say forgot wallet. And hit enter. The transaction is now on hold. I can now continue with my line of customers to knock, all my, to knock my line back down. So now we finish our line. Now a customer comes back and they have their wallet. So what we can do at this point is hit fetch on hold, double click on the transaction, and there it is. You don't have to re-ring the order and now you can pay out the customer as you would. TS Lookup is your touchscreen lookup. In your touchscreen lookup you have your departments on the left and your items on the right. You also have a cursor here which lets you know which department you're currently in. So as you can see here, some of my departments here are color coded which actually makes it a lot easier for my servers or cashiers to locate my items. That is done in your touchscreen configuration. We also have the ability to customize the screen in any, uh, and customize these buttons any way that we want. We can position them where we want them, we can color code them, we can hide certain departments, and that's all done in your touchscreen configuration. The bottom here, if you have more departments that occupy the screen, you can hit the, the, this down arrow and it will show that department. You can also hit the left and right. If, again, if your items are occupying more than what the screen is showing, use left and right to navigate through those items. So, so far, I've showed you two methods of ringing up an item. Okay? We scan the product, which is this way. Scan the product. And now, under TS Lookup, I can now go to my department, also ring it up that way as well. So I can hit Liquor. Here's my Johnny Walker. And select the button. Now, as time goes on, your database will grow and your inventory, you know, this screen here will become very occupied and very busy. Now, because that happens, we have a third method of looking up the product, which makes it a lot easier to pull up that item. That method is using the search button on the top of the screen here. Great tool. So let's hit search and show what I mean by that. 
I can either sort by category, department, or vendor. Or I can type in the first couple letters of that product and it will also pull it up. So if I type in J-O-H, hit enter, there is my product. At this point, all I need to do is double click on it and it puts, puts it at the bottom of my screen here under my invoice list. So three methods of looking up your product. So the last button I want to mention is your options button, which is the same as your manager screen or manager button. This allows you to make any back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. So now that we have a couple items rung up, let's show you what else this invoice screen can do. I'm going to show you how to do an exchange and how to do a void and also how to look at that void and how to do a return or even exchange. Very simple. So in order to do an exchange or return, all we're going to do is let's scan the product. All right. At this point, what we can do is hit quantity change and change the quantity to minus one. Hit OK. All right, let's say maybe for some reason that this bottle was maybe cracked or the seal was broken. All right, and I don't, you know, I want this, I still want the bottle. Okay, so all I have to do at this point is change the quantity to negative one so I can return that original one and then scan another bottle. All right, and as you can see, my grand total is zero, meaning that, the, that this was an even exchange. Now that's how you do an even exchange. Now just to do a return, you would just delete that item, hit pay. Okay, and at this point, you would either you swipe the customer's card and return $203.30 back to the card. Or if it was cash, you would take out $203.30 and give that to the customer. Very simple. So again, to do, a, to do a return, you would just ring up the product. Again, let's just do that again. Scan the product. All right, and we're going to do a quantity change of minus one. Hit OK. And then hit pay. At this point, you select the tender that was, that was originally selected. Either if it was credit card, you're going to take that amount and give that to the customer. If it was cash, then you're going to take that out of the drawer and give that to the customer. Now again, to do an even exchange, you would scan the product, do a quantity change of that item, minus one, hit OK, and then scan the product again. And as you can see, we now hit pay, and it closes out the transaction. And that is an even exchange. Now, let's do a quick void. Very simple to do, all right? Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. You know, you can void an item that's rung up on screen, okay? Or you can come back and, and void a whole order out of the system. In order to do that, we're going to hit Options, which is our manager screen, which allows us to make any back or office changes or any adjustments in the software. So Options screen, Recall Invoice. Now, these are the invoices that we've ran today. So if we select one of these, we should be able to void that out of the system. So let's click on the one that's for $214 even. Double click. There it is. Now it shows you invoice number 13 completed on 626-2013. So now let's hit void. Are you sure you'd like to void this invoice? Voiding cannot be reversed, as I mentioned. So yes, this is my final decision. I would like to void it out. And again, this is tracked and recorded in your invoice totals report option number three. There we go. So now the invoice has been voided. Now we can go back to options and take a look at that invoice. So let's go to recall invoice, letter D again, under cashier. And again, if we select it, yes, it looks the same. And you can't really tell it has been voided out of the system. But if you open it, you can tell. So let's open it up and show you. It tells you right here at the bottom of the screen. Invoice number 13 voided on 626.13. And then that's how you do a void. Very simple. We have now gone over all of the functionalities of the invoice screen. I hope you enjoyed the training. Have a great day.